This channel is only possible thanks to direct contributions from viewers like Kronos, Argus, Bleed Red, Christopher Welch, and you. If you'd like to contribute to making more videos like this possible, you can do so for as little as a dollar a month on Patreon, or by buying a t-shirt at the merch store. Thanks a bunch, and I hope you enjoy the show. Honk honk, gamers. Taz here, and today we're going to talk about Purple Bloods. Purple Bloods are the first of Alternia's three true ruling castes, although they might be at once the true shadow aristocracy shaping the planet's history and the most disprivileged class of them all. This is because the cast doubles as the main membership of the Myrtle Messiah's cult that functions as the closest thing Alternia has to state-sanctioned religious practice. In truth, it's much more than that, because the clowns are actually right. Their worship is for Alternia's true god and effective shadow king, Lord English. Every drop of blood they spill is spilled for the vast honk he's prophesized to emit, as he does after the Alternian Empire's death in Homestuck Act 5. In other words, the Mirthful Messiah cult's vision extends beyond the mortal realm of Alternia, and competent members of the Order like Marvis seem well aware of this. Marvis's knowledge even includes the nature of his reality as a story, and knowledge of the canon and non-canon timelines that make up its narrative. While it's unclear how he knows this, his status as time-bound provides one possible explanation. Another might be his clowny affinity for rage, the aspect most linked to direct awareness of Homestuck's metatextual reality. Both's always a possible answer, too. Marvis's command of both his world and himself is such that I once thought him a lord back before we knew his aspect, but there's only room for one lord of time in this story, so I've since changed my guess to heir or prince for him, much like Link. The cast's mythic figures are both destroyer classes, with Gamzee, the bard, as the significantly more relevant of the two. Assuming the cast might take after Gamzee more than Carlos makes sense, as their brand of destruction and terror are tools of either the Empire on the surface or Lord English beneath it. But the temptation to abuse power is alluring for everyone, so it's a sure thing that plenty of purples out there are in it for the personal thrill of the hunt, rather than to serve their masters. It's important to remember that the Purple Blood cast is one that you're born into, and then groomed for from birth. The people in them, by and large, do evil things not because they're born evil, but because they're raised into a twisted view of what's normal and right. Like victims of some extremist cults, then, even some clowns are victimized by the Mirthful Messiahs. Whether it's those who accept violence as necessary because they're true believers, or those still innocent and young. Likely Seer of Hope Shahut belongs in the former camp, as a Southern Baptist-style preacher who can make even a religion constructed entirely out of bullshit sound truly inviting to the would-be faithful. Unfortunately, she's also convinced herself of her own words' meaning, and is willing to hurt others to comply with what her faith asks of her. She mostly does this when asked, particularly by Amicia. She's also willing to obey her religious leaders, like the Grand High Blood, in less lethal orders, like following you around for no reason. Karako belongs in the latter camp, as a child who is both refreshingly pure and kind for a troll and refreshingly easy to classpect for me. I see him as a page, defined by his innocence and effortless ability to rally others to his aid, like Branya and, of course, you. He also captures the warrior spirit of the class when he dives headlong into an unwinnable battle, not unlike Tavros vs Friska. But especially in light of his mind-bound status, this shouldn't be taken as a verdict of his personality, but rather his place in life and the narrative. Remember, my claim is that the classes function like Jungian archetypes. Whenever I make a guess as to a particular troll's classpect, all I'm doing is noting what archetypal traits seem most pronounced and exaggerated to me as a viewer of the story, but that shouldn't be taken to mean that that class is all that defines them. I don't believe that that's true even about actual Spurb players, as I've documented with my roleplay theory. 
I view the classes as mythological and storytelling patterns of behavior, but the behaviors themselves are ones that any individual person is able and likely to emulate at some point in their lives. Most people, if not everyone, goes through times where they seem innocent and worthy of assistance to somebody, and that's a pretty central motif of the page, meaning that any innocent young kid will partly seem like a page to me. This is particularly important in assessing our next cases, the Soleil twins, who are both likely pages in my opinion too, up to a point. Besides that very basic assessment, search me. I mean, what are we even dealing with here? The Soleils themselves claim to be one person split across two bodies, yet also somehow have two distinct aspects? How do we define personhood in a situation like that one? Well, in favor of complicating their narrative as much as I can and trying to divine what their arc and identities might be about, and keeping in mind what I said about Karako, here's my best guess. I think we're fundamentally dealing with two different identities that simply know each other so well that they can basically swap and perform each other on the fly. They're assisted in this regard by their telepathic powers which, in a sense, seem to be so powerful that they've essentially trapped each sibling with the inner mind of the other. I think what we're dealing with here are two very young kids who have never had the chance to figure out who they are individually at all, because their thoughts are always intertwined around each other. And so, I read their classes as simply being defined in opposition to one another. If I had to guess, I would say that the Breathbound is defined by taking freedom from the Doombound, who is defined by giving it by accepting their own restriction, just based on the natural affinities of both aspects. Breath's tendency is to expand and liberate itself, Doom's tendency is to recede and accept its circumstance. But you could just as easily swap the classes involved and arrive at a Thief of Doom and a Knight of Breath. Indeed, that may make more sense, as the Doombound Baisley starts off being the more assertive and intense of the two, while Breathbound Barzum seems more hesitant and soft-spoken, and therefore less impactful as their own person. The ragey confusion comes in because they're able to perform each other so well that it's hard to really have a clue where one begins and the other ends. At this point, even if you broke the psychic link between the two, they probably know each other so well that they could emulate each other's thoughts and behaviors even without having the other physically present, so... I guess they're both both classes? Yeah, that's my current guess. They're both both. And while dealing with them is really scary in the beginning, their pagey innocence eventually wins over the reader and gets you all to get along and leave the spooky manor together. The fact that Barsdom, Baisley, and Karago are all so lonely and hurt by the system is exactly what I mean when I say that the clowns are victimized by being clowns just as they victimize other people. None of the three deserve the cruelty of Alternia, even though they're high bloods. But frankly, even the most cruel and vile among the Purple Bloods is a victim in a way, since they are certainly fools to worship a god who cares not for any of them. In the end, once Lord English is summoned and the vast honk comes, it comes mocking everyone, since the Purple Bloods will never get to see their god themselves or enjoy his honk. Just another way that Lord English relishes hurting even the people who support him in getting where he is. That's gonna do it for this time. Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, keep rising. Huge thanks go out to my patrons for making this video possible. If you want to help support the channel and come join us at our awesome and growing Discord community, feel free to join us for as little as a dollar a month. You can also find me on the r Hiveswap Reddit and Discord. That's all for now, so thank you again, and as always, keep rising.